Hi, everyone. Good morning. I am WITF's Director of Community Engagement, Heather Woolridge. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special virtual story time with Pinkalicious author Victoria Can. This event is, of course, presented by WITF Public Media in Harrisburg, and we are incredibly excited and thankful to be able to present this opportunity to hear directly from Victoria uh, here for our WITF and PBS kids' families. We'd also like to recognize Commonwealth Connections Academy for helping to make today's event possible. Victoria Can is the award-winning illustrator and author of the picture book series featuring the whimsical and effervescent Pinkalicious. She's also the co-executive producer of the PBS hit kids series Pinkalicious and Peterific. She wrote and illustrated the New York Times number one bestsellers Goldilicious, Silverlicious, and Emeraldlicious. And she also co-authored and illustrated the first two books in the series Pinkalicious and Purplicious, as well as Pinkalicious the Musical, which premiered in New York to sold out audiences and continues to be performed across the country. Now, uh, right now, throughout the next 45 minutes, Victoria will present a very special read along with one of her books, and then we'll have plenty of time to ask Victoria some questions. We invite you, everyone out there watching right now, to participate. If you have a question or a comment, please type it in the YouTube chat window, or if you're watching us on Facebook, ask a question in the comment section, or you can also email us at discuss at witf.org. And finally, before we wrap up today, we're going to do a very special hands-on craft together. You'll have the chance to create your very own book with a leaf character using supplies you should be able to find right around your house. So right now, please join me in welcoming Debbie Rick, WITF's Director of Education, and the award-winning illustrator and author, Victoria Can. Thank you both so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here um, and to read, read my story to you and answer any questions. It's, it's a huge thrill for me. Well, we're so excited to have you. And um, we were talking just before about how much my own children enjoyed and loved the Pinkalicious series growing up. Um, and so I am so excited to hear um, Rubylicious. And I understand that you brought that book with you to share with us today. Yes. Well, first of all, welcome. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is my office. This is my, and my art studio. This is where I write and illustrate. Um, my, my books, and it's also where I'm co-executive producer of the TV show, Pinkalicious and Peterific. Uh, how many of you out there have seen it? Raise your hands if you've seen the TV show. Has anybody seen it? Oh, I see a lot of people out there in the audience have seen it. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, especially now that Halloween is coming. And uh, there are lots of, uh, there's a really great Halloween episode. I was, I just woke up singing the song about Halloween is coming and I go to bed sleeping. I go to bed singing the song. It's really fun. But if you, I don't know if any of you have read my book. So I'm going to ask you some questions and, and uh, maybe you can answer them. And I know you're all sitting securely in your homes or classrooms, but I wonder who out there likes the color pink. Does anybody out there like the color pink? Has anybody read Pinkalicious, the original book that started it all? Or do you want to read it? If that is you, raise your hands way up into the air just like this. Oh, that is great. What about Purplicious? Does anybody like the color purple? Has anybody read Purplicious in which Pinkalicious discovers the power of purple? If you want to read it or read it or love purple, then take your feet and stomp them on the ground and make as much noise as you can. What about gold, Alicious? Do you love the sparkly color gold that's like the color of my wand? Where Pink Alicious meets a unicorn and plays with a unicorn all day. If you like the color gold, if you've read Gold Delicious, if you want to read Gold Delicious, then tap the top of your heads and wake up that sleepy brain of yours. Wake up, wake up, wake up. What about 
Silverlicious. Have you read Silverlicious? Woo, that's fun. Have you read Silverlicious? Do you want to read Silverlicious? Uh, in which Pinkalicious loses her sweet tooth and discovers that sweetness comes from the inside. If that is you, you love the color silver, you want to read the book or you've read it, then wiggle your ears up and down just like that. And what about emerald? Do you love the color green? It's a sparkly uh, green, that's what an emerald is. It's also a gem, just like a ruby. And here, Pinkalicious, takes a garbage dump and transforms it into a sparkly garden. If you've read Emerald Delicious, if you want to read Emerald Delicious, if you love the color emerald, then slap your legs and make a lot of noise just like this. What about aqua, the color of the water? Have you read Aqualicious? Do you want to read Aqualicious? Do you love the color blue? And in this story, Pinkalicious meets a miniature mermaid. If that is you, wiggle your fingers like this. Oh, that's great exercise. And what about Peterific? Have you read Peterific? Do you want to read Peterific? If that is you, wiggle your toes in your shoes. Oh, doesn't that feel weird? And lastly, we have Rubylicious. If you want to read Rubylicious right now, if you love the color red, then jump up and down and say hooray! Woo! Here we are. Now we get to read it, and I'm going to show you what I have. I have a rock. Do you know a ruby starts out looking just like this? And then it goes to a stone cutter and it ends up looking all sparkly and it gets polished and it looks like that. So that is good to know as we read the story. And if you have your book, you can read along or you can get your book later. By the way, I wanna say, if you go to an independent bookstore, uh, there are signed books available. And some of the books, I did something that's top secret. In 50 of the books, I drew a little drawing like this or like this or like this. And if you get one of those books, you have to take a picture and show me. All right, here we go. Ruby Licious. Written and illustrated by Victoria Can. That's me. That means I write the story and I do the artwork. I do the illustrations. And there are lots of details in the illustrations. It takes me a very long time. I do it on the computer and it's mixed media. So I will take pictures. I will find pictures. I will use uh, scan and three-dimensional objects. And then I paint them all. So if you look at that grass, do you see the musical notes? Uh, there are lots of details. And do you see that castle? Well, that castle was made by collaging lots of buildings together like um, this, let's see. This is from a building in a pink palace in India. And then these are from Russia. And then this is from Northern Europe. And then I painted and drew these stones and then I put them all together in Photoshop. So that's how I do my artwork. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. While playing, I found a little stone for my rock collection. Does anyone out there like to collect things? Do you collect rocks? What do you collect? Shells? <gasps> toys. Oh, you collect toys. I love all my rocks but I love this one the most because it is my 100th rock, I said, showing my collection to Peter, my brother. That rock is old and dirty, said Peter. I can clean it, I said, rubbing it with a cloth. See, it was dirty and now it's um uh, still dirty. Peter picked up the cloth and started rubbing the rock. I don't know, Pinkalicious, I think you could, I think that's my, I think that's my phone ringing. Hold on one second. I think it's Pinkalicious.
That was the Pinkalicious hotline. She said to say hello to all of you. And she said, don't forget to think pink. Peter picked up the cloth and started rubbing the rock. I don't know, Pinkalicious. I think you could find a nicer rock than this one. Well, I want you, if you have your book or when you get your book, I want you to count all the rocks on this page and you can contact me on social media and tell me exactly how many rocks you count. Suddenly, the room filled with a puff of red smoke and a figure appeared. That's a lot of red smoke. Pink smoke would be much prettier, I said. Red is a pretty color too. Just think of it as very dark pink, said the figure. You found my home on the luckiest of days when all the rotating hemisphere coordinates are aligned with the number 100, said the figure. So now you have me, your very own grantor of wishes. Congratulations. Wishes, wow, are you a genie, asked Peter. Aren't genies supposed to live in a bottle, I asked. I am not a genie. I wouldn't live in a bottle because bottles get recycled, she said. I can live anywhere in trees or even rocks. Okay, we'll call you Rocky, I said. I guess that's fine for now. You get one wish. After I grant your wish, I am free to go, said Rocky. I thought genies gave three wishes, not one, said Peter. As I said, I am not a genie. I grant one wish, no more. Granting wishes scares me. You never know how they're going to turn out, Rocky said. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. What would you wish for if you only had one wish? You can comment in the comment section and let me know. I would love to know what your wishes are. Can I wish for a pile of sweets, I asked. That sounds like a wonderful wish, but I'm not sure, Rocky said nervously. Let me show you first, then you can decide. Puff, a big cloud of smoke swirled around us. Suddenly we were standing on top of a giant mountain of candy cupcakes, cookies, and ice cream. Wow, this is sweet-tastic, Peter and I shrieked with happiness trying to eat as much as possible. Oh my goodness, look at that. What would you eat first? Would you go right for that delicious cookie? Or would you eat that ice cream? Or would you eat a cake or a lollipop? What would happen to you if you ate all those sweets? Do you think that's very healthy? What's wrong, Rocky, I asked. I'm worried about how this wish will turn out. Is this your very best wish? Your most favorite thing in the world? She asked us meekly. It's pretty amazing, but my stomach hurts, said Peter. I ate too much and my head aches from so much sugar, I said. The candy started to melt into a colorful swirl and we began to sink into it. Maybe this isn't a very good wish, I said. Let's go back to your house and eat something healthy. Can you wish for something else, Rocky asked. What do you think they're going to eat? Well, you know, if you've read Pinkalicious, they eat green food, right? So what do you think they're going to eat here? What would be healthy? <gasps> red food, oh goodness gracious, look at that. <gasps> Do you like strawberries, raspberries, cherries? Do you know how healthy they are? Oh, what about grapes? Who likes grapes? Oh, I think a lot of you like grapes. Oh, and apples, and it's apple season right now, and pomegranates, how delicious. I am so impressed. You are very, very healthy eaters. What if I wished that we could fly, asked Peter. Oh dear, oh dearie dear, would that be the best wish? 
Is that what you want more than anything else in the entire world? Rocky asked. Yes, said Peter. Then I'll show your wish, she said, her voice shaking. Poof, a cloud of smoke formed around us as we floated out the window and into the sky on a flying machine. This is fun, terrific, I screamed while we zipped toward the clouds. Whoa, 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 be, 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 be careful, Rocky said anxiously. Look out for the bird, Pinkalicious, Peter hollered. Peter, watch out for that plane, I yelled. Eek, Rocky screeched. This might not be the very best wish. Let's think of something else, I said. Yes, please, something safe, begged Rocky. Oh, look, do you see she's hiding her eyes? She's so frightened she can't even look. I have always wished to be a princess in a castle, I said. And I could be a prince, said Peter. Okay, if that's your very best, most favorite wish ever, Rocky said doubtfully. Poof, a puff of smoke revealed a beautiful castle. Wow, it's pink amazing, I said. Yes, everyone thinks they want a castle. <sighs> Rocky sighed. Where are you, Peter? This castle is so big and cold. I was shivering. I'm, I'm by the drawbridge. There's something in the moat, said Peter. Oh, and look at that dragon. Careful of the alligator and watch out for the fire breathing dragon, yelled Rocky. Ah, ah, achoo, Rocky sneezed. I'm freezing and frightened. Burr, maybe wishing for a castle isn't the very best wish, I said. Let's go home. That dragon scared me. Flying made me dizzy, and all that sugar gave me a bellyache. <laughs> Rocky cried and hid underneath the covers. I'm sorry, you really are afraid of everything. The wishes would have been better and less scary if we shared the sweets with all the kids in the world, I said. And added seat belts to the flying machine, said Peter, and used the fire breathing dragon to warm up the castle, I said. Don't you think Pinkalicious and Peter are very clever? They are very clever kids because they came up with solutions. Why do you think they could come up with solutions? Do you think it's because they weren't afraid? Do you think that's it? Have you noticed when you're not afraid, you can come up with solutions? I was too scared to think of that, said Rocky. I wish you were brave because then you wouldn't be afraid and then you would have more fun, I said. That would be our very best most favorite, Peter added, wish in the whole wide world. Well, that was very generous and very kind. Would you do that? Would you give your wish away? Have you noticed when you're very kind that it can change everything and everybody around you? That if you're very sweet and you say something nice to somebody, they usually say something nice back to you? Have you noticed if you share a toy or a book that that kindness it can be transformative? So look what happened. It transformed Rocky. Look at that. Pinkalicious and Peter, you made a wish for me, said Rocky. Smoke swirled around her and she began to sparkle and shimmer and so did her rock. I held it in my hand as it glittered. It's, it's a ruby, I said. Ooh, that's right, my real name is Ruby. I have been cursed for a hundred years by someone who didn't like their wish. You broke the curse on this lucky day when you generously made a wish for me, said Ruby. 
Ruby swirled around. I'm not a genie, but I am a genius. And now that I'm not scared, I can grant your wishes. Poof, here is a castle. It's a little smaller without dragons and alligators. I hope you enjoy your new flying machine. It has seat belts and helmets. It travels slower and doesn't go very high, but you can make it go upside down and sideways. Wee, I said, trying it out. Lastly, here are nutritious lollipops, guaranteed to last forever, Ruby said. Peter and I hugged her. Thank you, Ruby. They are Ruby-licious. The end. Oh, thank you so much for listening. You're very good listeners, and I know you have a lot of questions now. I can't wait to answer them. Well, thank you so much for sharing that story with us. And I will just share with our friends, if you have a question or a comment, you can type it in the YouTube chat window. If you're watching on Facebook, you can ask your question in the comment section, or you can also email us at discuss at witf.org. So um, I wanted to start by asking one of my questions. Um, because I love that story also. That was wonderful. Um, it is really exciting to me that you're the author and the illustrator of these books, that you both draw the pictures and write the story. And so what I wanted to ask is what part comes first? Do you think of the story ideas and then create the art? Or do you have a picture in your head of what maybe the art might look like ahead of time? Uh, well, that's a that's a really great question. I I think about uh, what it is I want to write a story about. So the story comes first, but then as I'm writing, I think about what would be really really fun to illustrate. What would I love to illustrate? So when I was working on Ruby Licious, I thought it would be really fun to um, uh, not only illustrate the mountain of of sweets. But what inspired me even more was the image in which they turned into a colorful swirl. I thought that would be really, really fun to illustrate. So I, I um, do think about what it is that would excite me because it's such a long process to do the illustration. So I think about what is going to keep me interested and excited as, as I go along and, and um, work on it. So, um, and then because I'm also the writer of the book, sometimes I do the illustrations as, and as I'm working on it, I'll tweak the story a little bit and change it to go with what it is I'm illustrating. That is so fun. That's so fun. How old were you when you started writing? Well, I think uh, everybody is a writer. And uh, everybody out there, if you're if you're writing notes or if you're writing a letter or if you're writing anything down, you're a writer. And um, so I I started writing at the same time that our audience started writing. You know, in school, I didn't realize that I was a, a real writer um, until um, I. I was told by a publishing company when I brought my portfolio of illustrations and I asked if I could illustrate children's books and they said, we can't even imagine your work in a children's book. Uh, we, we won't even hire you. Uh, you're gonna have to write your own story. And I, I remember leaving those meetings that I had had with different um, art directors thinking, well, I'm, I'm not a writer. I can't possibly write my own children's story. But then I realized, you know, I write a lot of emails. I write a lot of letters. I write a lot of notes. Uh, I love to write down uh, how I'm feeling. Um, I, I actually am a writer. And that gave me the confidence to start writing stories. And uh, I realized, wow, I've been a writer all along and I never knew that. So I think that's really a good point that sometimes it's it's important to remember not to give up right and keep and keep trying. Um, we have some questions from our audience. Um, Gabriella, who's five years old, 
um, would, well, she wanted to share that she would wish for a unicorn so she could ride the unicorn if she had one wish, but she oh. also wants to know what would Pinkalicious want to be for Halloween? Well, first of all, Gabriella, I love your wish. And I wonder where you would go on your unicorn. So if you've read Pinkalicious Soccer Star, uh, you see that Pinkalicious rides uh, Goldie the unicorn and she visits all different soccer games all across the planet, all across the world. She goes, she goes uh, everywhere on Goldie. So I wonder where you would go or would you just trot around or would you just go to Main Street and go, maybe you could take your unicorn in the store. Uh, what would you do with your unicorn? I think that's a really fun wish. And um, your question, what would Pink, what is Pinkalicious want to be for Halloween? Well, I think Pinkalicious uh, would probably want to be a pink witch this year. Um, mm. I, just, I just have a feeling that uh, I think she would have a lot of fun mm -hmm. because when you're a witch, you get to practice cackling, right? Mm. You, Gabriella and everybody out there, maybe you want to try this. <laughs> Isn't that scary? <laughs> or she might be a pirate because pirates are really fun too. And they get to say, arg me hearties, oh, walk the plank, right? So maybe she's going to be a pirate. I don't know. Gabriella, what, what are you going to be for Halloween? What is, what is anybody out there going to be for Halloween? Is anybody going to be Pinkalicious for Halloween? And by the way, there is a Halloween book, Pink or Treat. I don't know if you've read it. There's also an episode, uh, Pink or Treat. So you can watch the episode and you can read the story. And this book, actually, it comes with... Uh, it comes with cards where you can write that you've been pink a booed and it comes with a big, oh my goodness, a big poster and stickers. So um, you might have a lot of fun if you with that book. That does look like a lot of fun. Um, a, a viewer asked, how did you and your sister come up with the story of Pinkalicious? Well, it started with my daughter who was three years old at the time. This is my daughter. She wore this pink princess outfit every single day. She never took it <laughs> off. She loved, loved, loved the color pink and she loved pink cupcakes. And um, so I, I wrote something, an email on my favorite day of the year, which is April 1st. Do you know what day of the year that is? Do you know why it's special? It's April Fool's Day. And I love April Fool's Day because I love jokes and pranks and I like to laugh and I like to play tricks on people. So I wrote an email saying that my daughter had turned pink from eating too many cupcakes and that she had a serious case of pinkatitis. And I sent it to my friends and family. And one of my daughter's friends was supposed to come over and have a play date that day, but the mother called up and she said, we are not coming over. I read your email. I heard about pinkatitis. I called the pediatrician. The pediatrician has never heard of pinkatitis, but said, be careful. It could be contagious. So that's it. We're done. And I said, ha ha, April Fool's on you. And she said, oh, that would make a great children's story. So that's, that's how it came to be. That's so fun. Um, so what I think would be really fun is if, um, I know that you've written all of these wonderful books and you've also, you also help and think about the show Pinkalicious and Peterific that airs on PBS Kids. Maybe we could watch just a really short clip of that show in case some of my friends might not have seen it. Oh, that's great. Yes. Okay. Mom, would it be okay if Pinkalicious brought a friend to class today? Oh, of course, honey. My mom says it's okay. Any friend of Pinkalicious's is... is <gasps> oh, my! Now, everyone, stay calm. You didn't mention Pinkalicious's friend was a... 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 <gasps> Her name's Pinkfoot, Mrs. Cooper. She really wants to learn dance, Mom. You said it was okay. I, uh... I did, didn't I? <laughs> um, welcome, Pinkfoot. 
Class, say hello to our newest dancer, Pinkfoot. <laughs> hello, Pinkfoot. Hello, Pinkfoot. Hello. Pinkfoot's never taken a dance class before, Mrs. Cooper. Just do the best you can, Pinkfoot. Okay, class. Everyone in position. Dancing is so much fun. I think you'll love it. Just do what we do. We'll begin in first position. And plie. And straighten. Arms up. And out. Very nice. And repeat. <laughs> it's okay. Careful. Not too close, Pinkfoot. <sighs> okay, everyone. Let's practice our grand jetés. One at a time, dancers. And... Grand jeté! That's it. Lightly, like delicate little snowflakes, just blowing in the breeze. Your turn, Pinkfoot. Well, that was so fun. Also, um, I think it's really cool that Pinkalicious learns so many wonderful lessons through your books. She learns a lot about the world and um, about people that are different and about how to share and support other people. Um, one of our get, one of our friends, uh, uh, Livia, um, and that's my daughter's name too, who is um, 11 years old, asked if you ever write sad stories? Well, Purplelicious is a very sad story because all the kids gang up on Pinkalicious and they tell her they don't like the color pink anymore. They only like the color black. And Pinkalicious has to learn to have the courage to stand up for what she believes in. And she spends a lot of that story feeling very sad and very lonely. And I have to tell you, I cried while I illustrated it, you know? I mean, it, she was really alone um, until she, she made a friend and the mm -hmm. friend showed her all about the power of purple, but sometimes it's not easy to stand up for what you believe in. And you do, uh, you know, you might lose friends by, by having that kind of courage, but in the end, you will make new friends and they will be very close to you and you'll learn something new. So I recommend if you like sad stories, you might want to read that book. It's hard for me to, to write sad stories because I'm very emotional. Um, so I actually, you know, as much as I love crying, uh, laughing, I, I, I also cry, which is not as much fun. <laughs> I don't really like crying. <laughs> Um, we had another question too. Um, what was it like for you to see Pinkalicious on television for the first time? <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> what a thrill. And what I really loved was, so the, there are um, actors who, there are kids who do the voices of Pinkalicious and Peter Riffick and, um, and Raphael and Jasmine. And what I loved more than anything was to watch them watching themselves in the animated uh, show for the very first time. That was, the, that was one of the greatest moments of my life because they were so excited. They were <laughs> laughing and crying all at the same time. <laughs> so excited to hear their voices as the characters. So um, yeah, it tru truly, truly a thrill. And I have to say the animation company, which is in Ireland, uh, are fantastic. And they do such a great job animating and bringing my artwork to life. And um, we are very close and I'm so grateful to them for all of their hard work. Well, I know that your books um, and um, Pinkalicious and Peterific inspire lots of children 
Um, and they inspired me to think about a fun activity for us to do together after we um, finish speak, uh, talking today. But I wanted to ask you my last question is, what are some things that inspire you that you get excited about? I really get excited about all of you. To be honest, I, I love connecting with all of you. I, I love hearing your ideas. Um, often, uh, I just want you to know you can connect with me on social media or have your parents um, uh, connect with me on Facebook or Instagram, uh, which is I am Pinkalicious, or I'm on Instagram, which is Victoria B. Can. And you can share, uh, you can have your grown up share some beautiful drawings. I love the work that you do. Um, this is this inspired me to write Rubylicious, this beautiful drawing of Redalicious. And it got me thinking, what if I did a story about red, what would it be? Would it be Scarlet Alicious? Would it be Crimson Alicious? Uh, would it be Ruby Alicious? And then what the story would be. So I love, I love seeing what you've drawn. Uh, here's Coral Alicious. I love seeing what you've written. So um, connect with me because that that's really for me the most fun. And the, the, the TV show is all about expressing yourself, whether or not it's through music or dance or art or theater. Um, and it's all about being curious and uh, problem solving. So uh, share with me what, whatever you, you might come up with uh, maybe you've come up with a dance or a song. I, I would love I would love to hear it because um, really like you, all of you are what makes me happy. It makes me so happy to be with you. And I and as Pinkalicious said to me on the phone earlier, uh, I want you all to think pink. So that's for you. I love you so much. Thank you for having me and have fun in your activity. I'd love to see. I'd love to see what you come up with. Thanks. Thanks. And please say hi to Pinkalicious for us. And to everyone, thanks for um, staying with us. We're going to do an activity after we wave goodbye um, to Victoria. And I wanted to let you know if you want to watch more adventures with Pinkalicious and Peter Riffick, um, you can tune in to WITF TV Monday through Friday at 1130 a.m. in the morning or on WITF Kids 24-7, Monday through Friday at 2 o'clock and 2.30, and that's in the afternoon. So let's wave goodbye to our friend, Victoria. Bye, Victoria. Bye. Thank you so much. Have fun. Happy yeah. Halloween. Bye. Happy Halloween to you. And OK, so we are going, that was so fun, you guys, right? That was so fun. Um, so we're going to make a craft together and I'm going to show you um, what you need to get together at your house to make this craft and it's not many things. Um, and then I'm going to show you sort of a sample of what I made and then we're going to make it together. So again, like when we were talking to Victoria, one of the things I thought was really special is the idea that she writes stories and she draws the pictures and creates the art. And did you see the music notes in the beginning of Rubylicious? I never noticed that before. So that was pretty cool. So what you need to do this craft is a piece of paper. It can be any kind of paper. It can be construction paper or white paper or other colored paper, that's fine. Um, I use an, a scrap piece of paper, a paper that we recycled. Um, and that's how I'm going to use, I'm gonna cover my surface with that so that when I use a glue stick, which you also need, um, I don't get it all over the table. So grownups might like that part. Um, you'll need something to write or draw with. So I have a black marker. And then for my activity today, you're gonna need some leaves. And it can be leaves from your yard or from a park or from a tree outside. I have a whole bunch of leaves and maybe you don't have any leaves. So another idea you could do is you could just take another piece of paper and cut out like a leaf shape. That's also gonna work for you. And you can color them different colors if you want to or however you wanna do that. And it's very simple. You can cut like different kinds of shapes and you can use that for this activity too. So let me show you 
what we're going to make. We're going to make a book, okay? And mine, my book that I wrote to practice making this is called A Visit to the Zoo. And I used leaves to make the bodies of my animals and my people, my characters that are in the story. And I wrote by Debbie, that's my name, because I'm the author and the illustrator of this book. So it says, A Visit to the Zoo. I'm going to read you my very long book. It's not very long. I saw a fish. And there's my fish. There's my person. I saw a peacock. And I made this as a peacock. And I thought this leaf sort of felt like the feathers on a big peacock. And then I saw a giraffe. And I used two leaves to make the giraffe's long neck and body, right? Or, um, and then the person, and then I wrote the end. So we're gonna make this book together. Again, what you need is a piece of paper, some leaves, something to write with, a glue stick, and that's it, that's all you need. So we're gonna start by taking our piece of paper and folding it in half. You can make this story as long as you want by adding more paper. So if you wanted to make it twice as long as mine, you can add another sheet of paper and now you have lots of pages, right? To write and draw on. But for this activity today, I'm only gonna use one piece of paper. And then I'm gonna take my scrap piece of paper, the paper that I found that I don't need anymore that I am recycling, and I'm gonna put it down on my table. So you can think of any idea that you want to make your story about, which is why I was asking Victoria if she thinks about the story or the picture first. But I think I'm gonna make my story today about going to a playground. I like to go to the playground. I think playgrounds are fun. And I'm going to draw a little bit about that. But you can make your story about whatever you want. Maybe it's about what your costume might be if you decide to celebrate Halloween and get dressed up, or maybe it's about your favorite part of the Pinkalicious books, or maybe it's about today, talking with Victoria. You can make your book about whatever you would like it to be about. So um, I'm gonna start by taking a leaf, and I think I'm gonna use this leaf to be my person. And that's gonna be the person's body, right? I'm gonna draw a little head up here and arms and legs, but I'm gonna put it flat down on my piece of paper with the, the side that I want to show down. So the back of the leaf will be facing up. I will take my glue stick, right? Glue sticks are great. If you don't have a glue stick, you can use wet glue. You could even staple it down if you wanted to. And you're gonna take the glue stick and you're gonna rub that glue stick all over the back of your leaf. And then you're going to stick your leaf onto your piece of paper. It works really, really well. Um, and you can do lots of things. If you don't want to make a book, you can create art by gluing lots of leaves, making a collage, or um, making different shapes out of all your leaves together. It's pretty fun and it doesn't cost anything because there are lots of leaves around right now, right? Lots of leaves. So um, my book, my story, I'm going to draw a little head on here. It's my little head. I think Victoria may be slightly, slightly more gifted as an illustrator, but that is okay. Um, and some legs and some arms. There's my person. And maybe this time I'm gonna give my person some curly hair. <laughs> um, and I'm going to write, uh, going to the playground. That's gonna be my title. Just like Ruby Licious is the title of Victoria's story. Going to the playground is going to be my title. going to the playground. And I'm gonna write by Debbie because I am the author and the illustrator. Um, 
if you, if this is hard to write those words, have a grown up help you or just make your pictures. You don't have to add words. There are a lot of really good books. Um, and maybe you've read some of them that have no words at all. They're just really fun pictures. And then you can make up the story and tell the story. And that's also pretty fun. So going to the playground. Okay, now I'm gonna take my next leaf and I'm gonna think about what are some things to do at a playground. And I think I'm going to make um, my person on a slide because I think slides are pretty fun. So I'm gonna take the glue stick again and I'm gonna glue it onto the back of my leaf. I'm putting my leaf down, I will show you, on my scrap paper like this so that it doesn't get glue everywhere, which makes it a little bit easier. Uh, and then on my page, I'm gonna put my person, but this time, because I know I'm gonna draw a slide, I'm actually not quite sure how I'm gonna draw the slide, but I am gonna put the leaf on a little bit of an angle. And again, you can write your story about whatever you want, but I think my person's gonna be sliding. So I'm gonna draw her face and her curly hair, and I'm gonna put her legs and her arms, and then I'm gonna draw a slide. And I'm gonna put some stairs on my slide. I'm getting ready to show you. I hope you're doing your page too. Okay, <laughs> so here's my slide. Let me put a piece of paper in the back so you can see. There's her sliding on the slide. She looks like she's about to fall off the slide. I hope she's being careful. Um, and I am going to write, I like to slide. Maybe I like to slide. I like to slide. There we go. So that's my second page and my cover, my um, cover page going to the playground. That's my title. I'm the author and illustrator. It's my main character. Um, I could draw more on that page if I wanted. I like to slide is my second page. Um, my third page. Oh, I don't know what your favorite thing at the playground, but my favorite, my most favorite thing is the swings. I really like the swings. So I am going to glue some more leaves and you can use different color leaves. You can make leaves do different parts of this. So this time I'm gonna put my person and I have one of these big red leaves. So I think I'm gonna make this the swing. It's, I'm gonna use it for the swing and I'll show you in a minute. So I'm gonna glue my leaf down. I like to make crafts that don't have to look a certain way. Like you can make them however you want. And it's more kind of, for me, it's pretty fun because I like to think that there isn't necessarily one perfect way to do it. You can make it however you want. I think that part is a good time. So, okay. So I am going to show you, I heard what my, here's what my leaves look like. And I'm going to draw some pieces for the swing and I'll show you in a minute. I hope you're having fun making yours. So let's see, here is my person on the swing. There's her legs and her body is that leaf and I made that leaf my swing. And then I'm going to write my words. And again, remember, you don't have to write words on yours, or you could have a grown up help. That's also okay. Uh, I like to, how about swing? This one could be, I like to swing. I like to swing. Okay. So then I have my very last page, which is the very end of my story. And I need to think of one, one more thing to do at the playground. Hmm. I will tell you one of my daughter's favorite things to do at the playground. She likes to play in the grass and she likes to play soccer. I don't know if any of you like to play soccer, but she really does. She's a really good soccer player and it's fun to watch her play. So 
this time I'm going to glue my leaf down and I'm going to have my person kicking. The soccer is all about kicking the ball, right? So I am going to have my person kicking a ball. And I don't know that I have a round leaf shape. So maybe what I'll do, because you could do this too, because there are no rules about how we're going to make our book, is I'm going to take one of my leaves and I have scissors here. And if you're allowed to use scissors, you can go ahead and get those. Or, or you could have your grown up cut it out for you, depending on what your rules at your house are. So I'm making a round soccer ball leaf because there are no rules about what I make in my book. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my glue on the back of that little round soccer ball leaf. And it isn't it interesting that it's a ruby delicious, a red soccer ball. And I will show you my last page before I write the words. Just kicking the ball. Just like my daughter likes to play soccer. And I will write, I like to play soccer. And then I will write the end. And I will show you what that looks like. Are you ready? I like to play soccer, the end the end of my story. And remember, if you want to add more pages, it's so easy. You just stick another folded piece of paper right inside and it's super, super easy to make. So I'm going to read you my whole story because I'm the author and the illustrator, which is so fun, right? And these are also really fun to make. If you want to make something for someone, you can make a story and then give it to someone as a gift. And that's a really, really nice gift to give to someone because you've thought about it and you've written a story for them and you've made pictures for them. That's fun. So mine is called Going to the Playground by Debbie. And it says, I like to slide. I like to swing. I like to play soccer. So that's the end of my story. And you can take all the time you need to work on your story and to um, add more things to it or, you know, kind of however you want to do that. So I'm really excited that we got to meet Victoria. That was the, that was pretty cool. And that we got to hear her story and ask her some questions. And I, I'm excited to say to my friend, Heather, Heather, what else do you have to share with us? Because I am just so excited that my friends joined us, that we made these fun books and that we got to meet Victoria. This is a good day, Heather. It is a super awesome Pink Delicious day. And thank you, Debbie, for uh, leading everybody through um, a, a, a awesome uh, Q&A with author Victoria Can um, and, and showing us a really cool project that we can do um, and practice our storytelling and, and uh, illustrating skills. Um, that was really, really awesome. I love your uh, curly hair girl and her playground adventures. <laughs> so thank you again to Debbie Rick. She's our uh, director of education. And it was awesome to be able to hang out with uh, award-winning illustrator and author, Victoria Can. Thanks again, too, to Commonwealth Connections Academy for helping to make this morning's event possible. Um, don't forget to watch Pinkalicious and Peter Riffick on WITF TV weekday mornings at 11.30 or weekday afternoons at 2 and 2.30 on WITFK, which is our PBS Kids 24-7 channel. If you enjoyed and appreciated this virtual experience this morning, consider making more events like this one possible. You can visit witf.org support to make a financial gift. You can also keep an eye out for more children and family events at witf.org events. And one more quick thing before we wrap up, we wanted to tell you, uh, take a moment just to tell you about a really cool project that WITF launched a little while ago called Ready, Set, Music. 
Um, it's a multi-platform approach to helping children and families talk about feelings. Sometimes that can be hard. It can be hard to use words to describe what's happening inside of us and how we're feeling. So that's why we created a bunch of songs and music videos and lots of musical genres, printable social stories, activities, and tons of additional resources. You can check that out at PennsylvaniaPBS.org slash Ready, Set, Music. There are so many really cool songs and um, sung and performed by local musicians. You should definitely uh, take a few moments and, and check it out if you're able. Thank you so much uh, to everyone who joined us this morning. Hope you stay safe and healthy out there. Goodbye and have a super awesome day. Thanks for joining us.